Welcome everybody. We're here along the Sea of Galilee in Capernaum where Jesus spent a lot of his time and we're going to talk about the parable of the vine in the vineyard and this has a real deep meaning as you come to learn and more, understand more about it. The vine represents how we are as part of being connected to the Savior and I want to show you on pruning it how we can be better. Okay, we're gonna, on a grape plant, typically you remove about 80% of the wood that came from last year's growth so that next year the growth will be more strong and you'll be a good discipleship. He talks in the scriptures about uh, when we become baptized, we are disciples and we are his friends. And so I'm gonna explain to you a little bit how this is important. So I'm gonna start pruning here. This is last year's growth. We're not to totally into rest period because there's still some leaves on the plant, but it's not gonna hurt it to do some pruning here for demonstration. So I start eliminating and each cut will help me to get further along on what we need to do. I'm taking another good cut right here. And, and I'm gonna go back here another cut to eliminate. So that we're gonna try to get back to, I'm going to leave right there. And you'll see right here, I've left a, a spur here, which is for next, this coming season, to grow a really good cane. It's got one or two buds here, and the growth will come from that. Okay, we're going to leave this cane right here up for this year's growth. And we've got about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine buds there. Which, if you leave too many buds, it's too hard for the plant to be healthy. So we're going to cut uh, this one here back like that. We've got a couple of them here already that we're leaving. And then we're going to come back in here and cut some more out. We've eliminated there. Now I'll try to keep explaining here as we're cutting. Then sometimes after you make a lot of cuts here, you come back and you do your last go through, so you eliminate it down to about where you need it. But each variety and each uh, grape has a different things that you need to do to leave more buds on some varieties and others. This one here is one called Capernaum, which is, uh, no not Capernaum, Alexandra is what they told me it was, and it's supposed to be a real choice grape plant. But anyway, okay you see here on the main part, this is an important part to understand. This is the main trunk, and this is what we call the vine, which is representing the Savior. And so that when we prune, we bring all the pruning back so it's connected closer to the main trunk or the vine, and then the production will be more productive. And because it's closer to the vine, and it tells us in the scriptures, he says, I will purge and bless you if, and that's the way he does that. When we're closer to the vine, he can purge and bless us. Uh, Jesus said in John chapter 15, I am the vine and you are the branches. Members of the church who have joined and been baptized are the branches. And so for you to be productive, you've got to stay close to the vine, which represents the Savior. If we get farther and farther away from him, our lives will be less productive. And so the key to this each year, and it represents the plant needs to be pruned, to get us back closer to the vine. And that way we stay productive. If we let a season go, and that means that we're not staying, doing the things to be close to the Savior, we're getting farther and farther away, and we're getting closer to the chance of being disconnected and, and gone. And it really ties into the parable of the 10 virgins, as you understand that. We have to constantly keep coming and uh, 
gravitating back to the vine to be close. So we're going to prune some more and more here so that we can see what we can look at closer. Okay, I'm going to make one big cut here and take all of this off. Another good cut right there to pull out more, more unnecessary stuff on the plant. Now along this here cordon here, we have a place here where uh, I'm going to prune out all these spots here like this. We're taking away uh, Now sometimes you have one vine from another coming close together, but that's okay. Uh, here we want to get the one vine that we know that we've done what we need to to be productive. Now there's a lot of symbolism in cutting away all this stuff. Uh, it symbolizes we need to get a lot of things out of our life that are just not being productive. And if we leave all that on the plant, it's, it's uh, burdening our lives down and we're not very productive. And we can th think about wh what things like that are in our lives. Okay, we're gonna get this out here to this point. We're gonna take this off out here. We're getting way out there. Now we bring this up and you can use the the trellis here is provided for this to have something to go on. Okay, we're going to leave this up here. We've taken off a lot of wood and there's some buds along here that's going to be pr productive. Okay, now we'll come to the other side of the plant. Let's just start eliminating and getting things. Now if you have to, to, you can bring up a cane clear from the ground to replace the main vine here. But this doesn't need this in this case. So we're going to switch over here and get to where you can see how much that's spread out. These canes right here are really pr going to be productive. They're pencil size and the nodes, the buds are close together. That's good. And there's one there, one here, and probably in the end we'll come back and take some more out. But here we got to uh, work to get the right canes that we want. So we're going to... Okay, let's... Uh... I know each cut may, might be a question on what are you doing, but it's eliminating so that there's room for next year's growth to really take off. Okay, this cane here is getting really out here a long ways. But, but it's okay, uh, we're going to end it right in here, so that this here can come up. This here is uh, just some, okay, here we go. This is a little early in the printing stage because we're not fully dormant, but it's gonna be okay for understanding here what's going on.
Okay, we're kind of come back to the vine as much as we can. Right over here, we came back really good to the vine. We got to do that here on this side here too. So right here, we're gonna. Okay, as we eliminate here, uh, you can only, uh, sometimes in our lives, we work with the best of what we are and can, at the time. But as we do more things to help us be better, then those canes will become uh, more girth growth to them and they'll be more productive. And sometimes that's what we have to do. We have to cut ourselves back and get that to happen the symbolism in the grape. If you leave too many productive buds on the grape plant in a season, then the, the, the clusters will be small, puny, and not very product, very good. But if you cut it back more in balance, the, the buds will produce fruit that's bigger, and you'll say, wow, those are beautiful clusters. And that's symbolism. Okay, now a very good uh, part to remember. We have to come back and renew. And to do that the best, we have to have a good bud that we depend on to produce a strong cane the next year. And so here in this case here, here is a really good uh, case. This bud right here will produce a really good uh, cane for next year. You can see right here, you put the strength in that bud. Now we need, we've got another one over here that we're doing too. Here's a good renewal bud right here. You don't leave too many of them, but you've got to have a, at least in a situation like this, probably about anywhere from six to eight renewal buds on here to renew good strong canes. There's another renewal bud here, getting back close to the vine. Okay, this has got way out here, which is okay for to a point, but it's getting so far away it's not good, so we're gonna cut it back some more. These canes should be more uh, girth to them, but a hard pruning this year will make that happen for next year. The ideal thing is to make all the canes that we produce from as strong a looking as this cane right here. This is a really best example we got on the whole plant. See that cane right there? It's, it's a pencil size, it's slick bark, and the vine is flaky bark, which means it's more than two years old. And so the bark flakes. And that's where you're, that's representing the, the vine, which represents the savior. See this bark here? It's, it's, it's kind of like the bark on a tree, where this here is just like on a slick growth 
from one year's growth, last year's past year's growth. But that's what we shoot for next year's production. And we've got a, another one right over here that's nice. We'll cut that back here at about six buds and cut the rest off. This one here can be cut again. Uh, this one here. So that's you know, when you walk up, you think, wow, what do I do? The best thing is just start eliminating and selecting in your mind what you're going to leave. And uh, it'll vary from who's ever pruning it to not. But the main thing is to cut enough off and, and leave the right productive ones. So let's see. Let's go down here. This is coming down below where we've got good trellis. So we're going to cut that off and leave uh, this here as a chance here to produce from down low close to the vine and you can make it come right out of the vine by cutting in really close if you have to at times but we haven't had to do that this time uh, there's dormant buds that lay dormant in the, in the bark there as we come back here and look at the vine as we have pruned it there's maybe questions that arise but the reason we have to sharply prune it and do it in the seasonal time, we can't let it go. It's like in our lives. When we need to do something, we need to do it. And the vine has to be constantly done each year. But the interesting thing is, is as described, he says, you become your, my disciples when you are baptized. And so we become connected to the Savior. And we can do many things to disconnect ourselves from the Savior if we're not careful. We have to continually do what we need to to stay strongly connected. And the best way we can stay strongly connected is to prune yearly or assess our lives yearly, take out the things that aren't good, and make our uh, being connected to the Savior more productive. Now that is a whole host of things that we can talk about. But if you understand here what we've done to the grape plant, we've simplified it. We've made it so that where it's going to produce fruit is going to be bigger fruit. It's going to be more productive. And of course, you've got to do all the other things in our lives. We've got to feed ourselves right with fertilizer, with scriptures. The scriptures feed us. And that's the fertility to the vine that we need to provide. Water. And water. Living water. Living water. Yes, very well. All those things are, are necessary. So the, the Savior said in there, I will bless and purge your life. What is purge? It's get rid of the bad things out of you to help get rid of it. We all struggle with things that we don't like that's going on. And so we have to continually petition the Lord. But if we'll come back, gravitate all the time back to the vine. And of course, when we are pruning, that's a one time that in the year, the season, that you come back and position yourself close to the vine. If you let a great plant, if you've looked at one that's been neglected for several years, especially more than two years, it looks like a rat's nest. And our lives can be represented in that way. If we haven't done anything good and, and not uh, doing all the things we should do. But some of the things that how we can renew back to the vine is the sacrament table, uh, monthly, weekly and as often as we can. Uh, going to the temple is renewing our covenants. We could go on with a list, a list and a list, but you think that's by chance that that renewal, as it's a viticulture description on pruning grapes that has been used for, for centuries, I think it's classic to come back and repoint, uh, start a renewal spot for the next season is you have to come back and renew constantly and it represents the covenants and that that we've made at baptism and of course it's a step by step we don't make all the covenants just at baptism but as we add to that we have all these things that we need to constantly renew constantly or we'll won't have it in our in our uh, disposition or make up of what we're doing how we should be living. Okay, the parable of the vine and the vineyard is really important because the vineyard, uh, the caretaker of that, uh, over the vineyard is God the Father. But the Savior represents the vine, which represent, he's representing each of us because 
His atonement applies to each of us. And so what's so good about that, we all are part of being blessed from what the Savior has done. When he died on the cross and the atonement has helped us, if we continually repent of what we need to all the time, that brings us back closer to the vine and he can bless us that way. And so that's a, a, such an important part uh, where the Savior is helping each one of us. We could ha have our spot on each vine that we are part of and can be blessed. So that's, that's just a great thing in our lives if we can realize that. As we accept and understand uh, what the Savior does for us, when, we, when we're being pruned, it helps to humble us and help us to realize that when you prune a bush or anything like that, it's taking it back and helping us to renew back with stronger growth. And it helps us to become better people, a better person. And the symbolism of to the vine, we each have our personal vine in relation to the Savior that we're connected to. And I think that is such a, a strong thing. Go back and assess yourselves yearly, weekly, monthly, whatever we need to do to be renewed back to the vine. And that can really bless our lives if we just understand that and get into the scriptures and live them. Thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.